Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Here with my good pal, Alex Arthur. Alex, it's been a while, mate. It's always uh, You're always a busy, busy man. For me to get in this gym, it seems like I need to book you. You need to put me in your diary or something, man. But how's life? How's things going? Aye, good. Great stuff. Keys up, mate. <laughs> It's good, isn't it? Aye, it's great. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I've lost my TV role, <laughs> uh, uh, I um, I know it has been a while now. Um, we've been, I th- it must be about six months or something, and um, still get stopped by people on the street and messaged on social media. When's Andrew coming up to do another interview with you? Sorry. Well, I'm good. Here. Yep. Well, I'm here. I'm here back. I All right. To talk to um, I saw that. I think that. In that time since I've last spoke to you, I mean, we've witnessed uh, Josh Taylor. There's a lot of things that have happened in the boxing world that I, I, I want to talk about, but I want to stick on something that's close to your heart and start with, uh, obviously, the amateur boxing. You've got two young sons in, in Junior, Alex Junior and uh, Macklin, that have been training their, their butts off in this gym for months and months and months now. But unfortunately, you've, you've witnessed qualifiers and stuff like that. You, you commentated on them, but unfortunately for us, the, the young Scottish fighters, they can't seem to get out, they can't seem to get a fight. But it looks like the Scottish Championships are happening in September and October, so there is some light at the end of the tunnel. But for you, that's been a disappointing time for you and Mac and, and Junior, hasn't it? Well, it's been a disappointing time, I feel, for amateur boxing in Scotland overall. Um, I think it's been uh, it's been really tough to see from my perspective, obviously going to the qualifiers and stuff, and no seeing any Scots there, wasn't he? Wasn't he very nice? You know, I'm very much like you, a very, very patriotic Scottish person, um, and I love to see Scottish people winning and doing as much as they can in sport. Um, so, aye, it wasn't very nice, and and some people might take it wrong, like I'm, uh, like I'm giving people a hard time, or you know, I'm uh, maybe being a wee bit um, unfair to you know, system setups, coaches or whatever. I just like to see Scotland winning. I like to see Scottish people winning and competing. And I'd love to see a few Scottish lads in the Olympics, but it's just not the way it was and it's not the way it's been lately. Again, going back to what we were talking about originally, it's been a really hard time for all the youngsters in boxing in this country because competition ceased, everything ceased. They, they dealt with it awfully where all the other countries in the world kept competing all over Europe, all over the world. Nobody stopped apart from here. Um, and that was tragic. Very fortunately for my sons, we own our gym. So we were able to continually train all the way through, spa, lift weights, do all the training it took. And Alex and Macklin are in phenomenal shape and they're ready to get on with their, uh, ready to get on with their seasons. Like I said to you, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Macklin that one in September. You've got uh, Alex Jr. that one in uh, October, I believe, in the Scottish. Uh, how excited are the two young men to finally have a that light at the end of that tunnel. I mean, I've just witnessed uh, Junior hit the Pasby there, man, he's looking sharp, he looks good. He's got a four-pack now, so he's doing all right. Um, <laughs> I mean, but he's looking good and he? he's looking sharp. He's, he's in the best shape he's ever been in now. He's worked really, really hard over the last year. Um, his dedication's been unbelievably good. He's in phenomenal condition. He's, his body looks great, you know, his, his weight's good. The new 80 kilogram weight will suit him so well as well. You know, um, 75, he was keen to get back to 75. I was, I was a bit worried, you know. I had a few weight-making struggles in my day. And um, I want him to enjoy the sport. And uh, So 80 kilograms will suit him perfectly. He walks around around 82 or 83. So getting to 75, especially with his current body fat percentage and the training that we've done over the last year would be worrying for me. Um, but aye, so he's, he's in great shape and he's, he's really excited about the season coming up. Like, I'm quite sure all the young lads in Scotland are. Um, I know we've, some of the young lads have continued to compete. We've seen a few young guys out at the European under-22s um, recently, but no medals won. Um, I think maybe a, a bout or two won at the most. Um, so, aye, it's, it's no great. And I think lack of competition has got something to do with that as well, you know, with the lads no winning bouts. Um, and, um, aye, it's, uh, hopefully the future looks a bit better for Scottish amateur boxing, yeah. Well, that, that, that's the good thing, like I say. So, I've, I've just seen Junior there hit the pads. He's looking good, so it'll be a waste if he doesn't get out there and, and do his thing in the Scottish Champion, especially with all the young amateurs in Scotland as well, to get out there, finally get out, and, out there and have a fight. Yeah. But you seem to be a natural on this mic that I'm handing you back and forth. You mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned uh, losing your TV deal. Um, when, 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 Dazone, when Dazone mentioned their, sort of, like, their start, started line up and stuff like that, you did get a lot of tweets and people on Instagram messaging you saying, why aren't you? Because a lot of people do respect the way you break down the fight and your, and your analysis. And you have done work with Dazone before in the past and stuff like that. Um, but for you, were you disappointed not to be asked? Or was it just, did, did you know you weren't going to be asked? Or, or what was the, your thought process there? 
Well, really, I've actually been with the zone for a long time, um, and we worked really quite hard, you know, building up the the, the profile here in the UK. You know, I've, I've been used over the past few years. Um, I think even before Matchroom had a part in the zone, I think I was working with them even before that. So I was disappointed. I was a wee bit disappointed. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I was uh, that I was totally okay with it. You know, um, to me, it looks like they've got a team that um, that are very professional. You know, um, the the the, uh, the the girl that they got up there got a, a lot of hard hard stuff for the people on social media, but she's a presenter. She's not a boxing a analyst. You know, that was a shame. Um, there was no. Ah, uh, she's there to present. She's not there. Ah, uh, ah, is that? Yeah, that's her name. I don't know how to say her name, so I don't even want to um, embarrass embarrass myself or anyone else. Um, I am Junior using the it's hair dryer right. there. That mic will just run oh, really? Putting his makeup on, putting his makeup on, um, blow drying his hair. Getting that crisp sorted. Uh, getting his crisp sorted. <laughs> uh, aye, so um, I, I think Andy Lee's one of the best, if not the best, boxing analyst in the world. I'm a massive fan of Andy Lee. Boxing and Deck and Barker and Chris Lloyd. So. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, Chris is very good as well. You know, um, Chris is very good. I've worked with Chris at the zone and he, he's brilliant as well. He delves right into the sport. He likes to, you know, lo know lots about the sport and puts himself through tough training sessions with, with professional fighters just to get a little bit more knowledge and, and I respect that um, because as you know there's a lot of people and you're, like yourself there's a lot of people involved in the sport now who aren't boxing people yeah. you know they're no boxing people um, and when I talk to some people about things like that you know Matt the old I'm maybe the last of the old school or people around my age um, and the old guys would be turning in their grave if they seen some of the people that are involved in the sporty boxing now. Um, but that's just the nature of the world these days. Mm. Things evolve in the way that they are. Um, um, aye, but I am disappointed. And, um, and and I would have loved to have, you know, been involved still ringside at the fights. Um, but doing the Olympic stuff and, and, and the amateur stuff has been brilliant. I've, I've really enjoyed that. Yeah, there you go then, there you go. Um, like I said to you, it's been months since I've spoke to you in that time. We've we witnessed a good friend of ours, Josh Taylor, become undisputed world champion against Jose Ramirez out in Las Vegas. Um, I mean, for me, it was an absolute pleasure and an honour to be out there and witness that sort of, not just as a, he's a good friend of mine, but witness... Uh, Somebody from Scotland achieved something that massive and that magnitude and stuff like that. Sometimes we throw all our hopes on in football and rugby and stuff like that. But what Josh has done, man, I think we need to elevate this guy as, as Sportsman of the Year or something like that in Scotland because it's a great achievement for you. I mean, we saw it coming. I mean, we talked about it many times. We knew, we, we, well, we can say it now, but like yeah. we, we knew he was going to be world champion at, at minimum at least. But what an achievement for Josh, wasn't it? It was, it was no surprise to me in the slightest, none, zero. Um, I think I said a while ago, if you go back and look at some of the interviews, that I thought it would be an easy fight. Mm, I did say I thought it would be an easy fight. It wasn't an easy fight. No, no fights at that level are easy when you've got to take into consideration what is on the line. Mm. You know, none of the fights are easy. Just dealing with the pressure is hard, you know, and that that is something that only the elite can do. Um, Josh has got a, a bad habit of making uh, fights that he can win easy. I said ages ago, all he has to do is box mm -hmm. and box smart and move properly, be in the right positions to throw the shots that work for him well and he'll be gone by the time Ramirez gets ready to load up. But Ramirez tactically had a good approach as well. He's got a great team. He's surrounded by good coaches and stuff. Garcia and other guys are really good. They know boxing well. So he put up a good fight and, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd done well, but Josh was in control all the way through for me, barring, you know, a few wee points in the fight where, you know, you seen Ramirez getting close and starting to unload body shots and stuff. It's always a bit worrying, you know, you're always a wee bit on edge, but aye, as predicted, um, Josh, was a, Josh was a clear winner and what he's done for boxing in Scotland is, is amazing. It's amazing, unbelievable. What next for Josh then? I mean, there's, there's the Jack Catterall fight, maybe. In that, I know you wanted that Edinburgh Castle fight when you, you were fighting, or even Josh could fight him at Easter Road. Josh does want to come home to Edinburgh to fight, so Jack Carroll does make sense. That is his mandatory. But there's also those mass, that carrot, that huge fight against Terence Crawford dangling uh, for him over in the, in the States, maybe even Vegas again. For you, where would you like to see, what route would you like to see Josh go down? I mean, he does have options now, being that he's got that big target in his back. Does he move up? Does he stay? What do you think he should do? Well, really, at this point in time, he has to sit down with his team and make a decision on where they 
think they deserve to be, in my opinion. Now, Josh, Josh is Josh is a Josh is a motivated guy. He doesn't like to lose at anything. You know, he's he's got he's got a brilliant attitude for boxing, and he um, Josh likes to fight. You know, he likes to fight. He's a, he's a quintessential Scotsman. So, for me, I I honestly think that. Uh, no disrespect to Jack Catterall, who's a very good fighter, and I'm, I'm good mates with, with Jamie Moore, and, but I think it's a step back. Mm. I think it's a step backward. Um, it's it's potentially, um, you know, a, it's not a, it's not a risky fight for Josh. I'm not being disrespectful. It's an easy, in my opinion, it's an easy fight, <clears throat> but. It's a relatively pointless fight. I know it's his mandatory and I know he has to make that decision, but he's got loads of belts. Mm. He can give one or two up. It's yeah. not going to make much difference. Everybody knows who the best light welterweight in the world is. It's Josh Taylor. Mm. You know. Um, now, the one fight at light welterweight, if it's going to happen, the best fight at light welterweight is Gervonta Davis, mm. if he's going to stay at that weight. Yeah. Um, Prior to his fight at light welterweight with Barrios, I didn't give him much chance against Josh. Size, weight, advantage for Josh on the night of the fight. Um, stylistically, no great as well. Um, but after that performance against Barrios, that's a super fight for me at that weight. If if Davis wants to stay that way, he's very small. Mm. He's very small, but as we've seen, he's a, he's a demon. Mm. He punches like... He punched like a light middleweight. Mm. Well, he's unbelievably fast. His timing is spot on. He get he's so dynamic as well. And what I have noticed about him recently is he's patient. Mm. You know, he cuts down the ring well now, and he's got good defence, and he takes shots, but he's very, very clever. Mm. Uses his energy really well. I think that's the best fight at light welterweight. If I was them, that's a super fight in my opinion. They can build that up, make that huge. Josh versus Davis. Desert light welterweight over up to welterweight. Mm. Look for the Crawford fight. That's that's where I would go. Undisputed versus undisputed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I know you mentioned your patriotic Scott and stuff like that. So between Josh and, and Lee McGregor, there's every single belt is in Edinburgh in boxing in yeah. terms of Commonwealth, British, European, but Lee off four world titles in the Ring magazine with Josh. So for Edinburgh and, and obviously Scotland is a small country, every single boxing between these two fighters, every belt in boxing between these two fighters is, is in this little city. And obviously in Scotland, it's, 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 that's some achievement as well for, for Lee McGregor and Josh to, to do that, isn't it? Aye, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's unbelievable. I think I've got like seven belts in the house as well. Yeah. Uh, Lonsdale belt to keep as well, which I'm sure Leo want to, want to go on and, and try and get Lonsdale belt to keep. It's an amazing belt. So they say it's the best belt in boxing, and it's definitely my prize position mm. in terms of belts. So I'm quite sure Leo want to keep that. It's, it's not at that weight class as well, getting the bouts to, to rack them up. It's, it's a wee bit harder at the lighter weights mm. um, to get the bouts to get the belt to keep. Um, but I'm quite sure he'll probably want to crack on and, and get that belt for keeps because it's, it's an amazing, amazing belt. I want to just jump, moving on a little bit now to the, to the heavyweight scene, because I do like enjoy getting your, your thoughts on the heavyweight scene. Uh, Joshua Fury talked about, didn't happen, well, the Fury signed, not happening. Uh, Usyk Joshua looks like it might be in September, October time. Um, just your thoughts on that whole sort of like the heavyweight division in, in, in general with that scenario? Is it because I'm a heavyweight now? Is that why you like to no, talk to me a bit? You could probably compete with them now, look at the size of them. <laughs> <laughs> This one's vainier. I don't know why. Ah, the the heavyweight division is a, is a. It's exciting again. It's exciting again. It's not been exciting for a long time, but it's exciting again. Mm. And you know, come on, get on with it, man. The fight everybody wants to see. The whole world wants to see. My pals in America, my pals in Russia, my pals in Europe. Everybody just talks about Fury versus Joshua. You know, that's all anybody wants to see. Fury Wilder, it's, I think I think Fury's going to walk over him again. I think he's got to steamroll him again. Um, now, Usyk, Usyk versus Joshua is really interesting for me. Really interesting. Um, how Joshua approaches that fight makes me, uh, makes me excited about watching the fight. Um, how's he going to approach it? That's, that, that's, that's the most, you know... Uh, when I think about that that contest in particular, that's what I'd be interested in. 
How is he going to approach it? How is he going to take Yusik on? Is he going to go straight to him, throw loads of combinations, try and cut the ring down? Or is he actually going to like hold his feet and try and use his height and reach? And So I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a boxing nerd. I like to think about the things. And um, that'll be the interesting part. But then I think when it when it comes down to the nitty gritty, that the size difference is just it's just maybe just can too big. I can I keep him off? I I mean he had problems with with Derek Chisora, you know. So um, keeping some of the ages exuberance and youth and his aggression as well. He's an aggressive guy. He can put the punches together. Um, will Usyk be able to cope with that? Um, he's phenomenally fit. He's a great combination puncher himself, and of course his movements impeccable. AJ can't let him get into a rhythm and start floating round the ring and piling up points and stuff because that rhythm might not get broken. So I'm 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 very excited about that bout, yeah. And then of course everybody wants to see Fury Joshua. Everybody wants to see it. In terms of that fight then, I'm probably hopefully if Fury you think he's gonna steamroll well the I'm I'm ho- I'm guessing you think that Joshua might just edge past past Usyk. So that fight in twenty twenty two, if it does happen but fingers crossed it does happen because I think as boxing fans um, we want to see it how do you see that fight going? Well I've said before I think in in our previous interviews um, you've got to favour Fury right now for me Um, just the the, the, the nature of both their styles um, makes me go towards Fury but the longer it it drags on I give Joshua more of a chance Mm -hmm. you know as, as the years go on I would give Joshua a wee bit more of a chance, um, a, th- more, a wee bit more athletic, you know, f- physically um, better condition, but but Fury, that doesn't matter to Fury, you know, but longevity does, you know, and you with Fury's style, you know, he does rely a wee bit on his reflexes um, and he's he's got natural stamina. He's got even his size doesn't really make much difference. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got natural stamina. He's not got a bodybuilder's physique. Aye, aye, he's got unbelievable mm-hmm. stamina, unbelievable. Um, that does leave you eventually. I, I mean, that eventually does go um, with age. But you know, again, um, the quicker that fight happens, the better. The better for for the boxing world as well. Um, in terms of um, it's better for Fury for it to happen quickly as well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the quicker that happens, the easier Fury wins. The longer it's left, the more chance Joshua's got. Not saying he, Joshua will win, mm-hmm. but he's got more of a chance. Well, that, that, like, I know you're pressed for time. I know your PT, Yusuf, over there, he's been <laughs> patiently waiting for you to get in there. And, yeah, he's a big boy, man. Maybe I should <laughs> sit, sit and film him hitting them pads. <laughs> um, but there is one huge fight that we, we haven't talked about, and it, we, it's been on... It's been discussed about between people. I just want to get your thoughts on it. Me versus you in, in an exhibition fight. Now, we've yeah. talked about this fight for a wee while now. We're going to do it for charity and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so when can we get this ball rolling? I mean, we've talked about, we've talked about, we talked about, I think we should we should think about maybe seriously getting Arthur versus McCart, the king of Edinburgh. I think it'd be, aye. It would be great. <laughs> it, would be, it would be so good. Um, of course, we spoke about it fair and... and uh, you told me I'm not allowed to hit you in the ribs. I'm not allowed to hit you in the nose. I'm not allowed to hit you. Where else is I'm not allowed? To <laughs> I'm not allowed to hit you. So, so I'm, I'm supposed to get. I'm just going to stand in and get beat up for three rounds. It would be amazing. We'd have so much fun with that whole thing. Um, and charity starts at home, so um, I would be looking to earn a lot of money for that particular bout with, with my cat. <laughs> It would be so much fun. Hopefully, if we can do it in the future, it'd be it'd be brilliant. It'd be great. Uh, hopefully, we get something like Josh Taylor or something like the real king of Edinburgh. Really, when at this stage right now, he, he's got he's, he's kicking ass right. So hopefully, we get Josh to referee the fight. I mean, you can hit me. Like I don't mind. I want to taste my own blood. I want to get a broken nose. I want to see what it's like to get hit by one of them body shots from from Alex Arthur. I watched you as a kid at Middle Bank and to to feel one of them body shots, man. It's probably almost like a. A badge of honour for me. Do you know what I mean? So just hit me in the ribs all you want, me. If you break a rib, man, I don't care. I'll go to the hospital, I'll come out and have a pint with you. <laughs> What's wrong with us, Scott? Eh? Yeah. What's wrong? I mean, that just, eh, just like, aye, there's, we're just no wired up the right way yeah. to want to get hurt and beat up. Um, aye, it's just, it's just madness. I'll probably, I'll, I'll need to go into um, hospital before the fight and get my shoulder fixed, my knee, my hip, my <laughs> neck. <laughs> 
my elbow. My elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Alec will tell you how long it actually takes me to get up in the morning now. Easily. <laughs> Honestly, I'm 43, but uh, I know I'll need to watch. I'll need to watch my weight. Um, aye, but you know, over the, over the span of 20 odd years, 180 fights, amateur and pros. It's it's amazing how much is catching up with me. It's it's crazy. Um, you know, like how slow I am. <laughs> I can't walk properly. I'm, I've got a, I've got a tear in my shoulder that I'll have to get fixed. So I'll have to get operated on at some point as well because it's, it's you know. So, I it's um, a, bo a long boxing career is no good for your health. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so all, all I heard was excuses, but listen, yeah, that's all I heard was excuses. If I well, be wait till you see, wait till you see me on this particular night, right. you'll be really wait, surprised. Wait, 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 okay. <laughs> Am I getting the best acts, Is that what you're saying? No, but we, we on a serious note, we do want to do this for charity. We do want to like get more people involved, like ex fighters from Scotland or anyone like do you know what I mean? People that want to. But like maybe some celebrities around in Edinburgh that want to do a little bit of boxing as well. You know, we want to, we want to get everyone involved in, in, in stuff like that. So we're going to do do it for charity. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll iron out the details. If anyone knows anything about seating areas or where we can do it, barriers, security, or anything like that, get in touch with us on Instagram and uh, let's get this ball rolling. But Alex, as always, thank you so much for doing this Five Full TV. Um, I'm actually going to get you to do pad work with me next week, so I'm going to learn from you to beat you up if that makes sense so that 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 that, that, that makes perfect sense so that's how we roll in scotland that's what we're there yeah, exactly. <laughs> alex thank you so much for doing this rifle tv champ and uh, i'll let you get to your pt so thank you again oh, man. thanks again andrew great to see you bro. thanks alex